You go to a swimming pool once a week, and today's the day, but everything suddenly goes wrong. As soon as you enter the swimming pool, you look at the TV in the hall. Breaking news! Someone spotted a zombie in town. They probably went downtown, and they may be anywhere. If you see one, call the police immediately. You think it's probably safer to stay in the swimming pool. Zombies are slow and probably aren't good at swimming. So you go to the shower to change, but as soon as you enter the shower room, you notice that something's off. Who's a zombie? The two girls seem completely fine, but there's a bandage on the man's leg. No one would go to a swimming pool if they had cuts or scratches, unless they're a zombie. Once upon a time, there was a wealthy king who hired an artist to paint his portrait. The artist told the king that he wanted to be paid in gold, and he wanted to get paid every day. He also said it would take him seven days to finish the painting. The wealthy king had only large bars of gold, and he wanted to give one bar for his work. But since the artist wanted to get paid daily, he needed to come up with a plan. He had a magic tool that could cut any material, but it was able to make only two cuts. How did the king split the gold bar so that the artist got his gold every single day in equal amounts? The king was really smart, so he cut the bars this way. One seventh, two sevenths, and four sevenths. The first day, he gave the artist one seventh of the gold bar. The second day, he gave him two sevenths, but took one seventh back as change. The third day, he gave one seventh back. The fourth day, he gave four sevenths, but took the other two pieces back as change. The fifth day, he gave one seventh, so the artist got five sevenths of the bar. The sixth day, he gave two sevenths, but took one seventh back again. And the very last day, the artist got one seventh, so in the end, he had a full bar of gold. Four friends, Josh, Maggie, Jason, and Rosie, were walking in the woods. It was a wonderful day, and they were about to start a picnic. But all of a sudden, the sun turned to black, and they saw dozens of zombies approaching them. The friends started running away, and saw a tunnel. It was dark and scary, but the guys knew exactly that when they crossed it, they'd be safe. They had only 12 minutes to cross the tunnel. It takes Josh one minute to cross it. Jason can do it in two minutes. Maggie thinks it will take her four minutes, and Rosie can cross it in five minutes. Not to risk it, the guys decided to split into two groups. The problem is that they only have one torchlight, and there's no way they go there in four. How can they escape? First, Josh and Jason should cross it with a torchlight while the girls are waiting on the other side. It takes two minutes, plus one minute for Josh to go back. They still have nine minutes. Josh hands the torchlight to the girls, and they cross the tunnel in five minutes. Four minutes left. When the girls are on the other side, they give the torchlight to Jason, who comes back to take Josh in two minutes, and they run back together in another two minutes. The airport security had an emergency alert. There's a man with fake documents trying to fly away from New York. They had three suspects who look almost the same. Which passport is fake? No matter what country a person is from, no passport can have a photo with mountains in the background. All backgrounds should be solid. John's passport has a suspicious photo in it. His documents are fake. Mason is a lifeguard. One day, a girl came up to him asking for help. She said someone had stolen her wallet, which she noticed when she was going to go and grab a soda pop. Mason checked the towel where the girl left her stuff, but the only thing he noticed were her own footprints. Is this girl lying to Mason? The girl was telling the truth. Mason had an eagle eye, and he saw a guy with a fishing rod. He must have stolen the girl's wallet. No one wants to go fish in the public beach. Robbers stole a few precious gems the other day. The police were alerted immediately, but they didn't know where to look for the thieves. Suddenly, they got an anonymous email. Check all the bottles in the cars leaving the town. Best regards, Mr. X. At the end of the day, the officers stopped a car loaded with boxes and bottled water. The bottle bottoms were all covered with paint, so they thought the gems should be in one of them. The level of water was the same in all the bottles, but when one of the officers placed one of them right next to the box, 
he instantly realized something was off. What was it? The bottle standing next to the box is much lower than those still inside. The police then found there was a double bottom and the gems were hidden right underneath it. Two friends, Martin and Clyde, had a bet. Martin said he would throw a ball and it would come back to him. He also said there would be no obstacle or wall the ball could ricochet from. Clyde said it was impossible and he lost. How's that? Martin threw the ball straight up. It obviously came back to him. No magic, just physics. Emily grabbed a really nice muffin at the cafeteria and put it on the office desk. She wanted to save it for later, but when she came back from the meeting, she saw someone had eaten her muffin. There were only three people who could do that, and only one person is telling the truth. Grace said it was Alicia. Alicia said she didn't eat anything. Tina says she didn't eat anything either. Who ate the muffin? It was Tina. Only one person is telling the truth, and it's Alicia. If Grace or Tina told the truth, then there would be two truthful people, but Emily knew only one person wasn't lying. Patrick really wanted to come to a private party, but the security would ask each person if they knew the secret access code. Patrick decided to overhear their conversations. When the person came up to the entrance, the security said 6, and the guest said 3. Then the security said 10 to the second visitor, and the reply was 3 as well. The third visitor also said three, but the security said two. Patrick thought he was ready to join the best party in town. When he came up to the entrance, the guard said seven, and Patrick replied three. The security didn't let him in. What should Patrick have said to get into that fancy party? He should have said five. The guest needed to count letters, six, 10 and 2 have 3 letters. That's why the answer was 3. In the word 7, there are 5 letters. Ben loved diamonds. For some time, he would spend $5,000 a day on precious stones. At some point, he realized he had too many gems, so he started selling them at $3,000 a piece. Sometime later, he became a millionaire. How is that possible if he was obviously losing money? Before his gem rush, Ben used to be a billionaire. Since he started losing money, he became only a millionaire. A vampire moved to a big city where nobody knew him to start a brand new life. Still, he just couldn't help it and started biting locals every single night. People got scared and invited a private investigator to solve the problem. A couple of days later, Detective Reitman had three suspects. He decided to visit each of them to find out who the vampire was. After visiting all the houses, he was sure he found the vampire. Who was it? Well, the man on the left has loads of garlic in the kitchen, and vampires are scared of it. The second suspect had a lot of silver-plated accessories, earrings, piercings, and a chain. Vampires don't really like silver. The guy in the blue shirt is a vampire. Long ago, in the kingdom of riddles, a criminal was caught. The guards took him to the king, who was famous for loving riddles. King Archibald said that if Harry, the criminal, managed to solve his riddle, he would set him free. Harry agreed and Archibald drew a two-foot line on the ground with his foot. The king asked Harry to make this line two times shorter without touching it. In the end, Harry was free. What did he do? Harry drew a four-foot line with his foot so that the one the king drew got two times shorter. Karen took part in a TV quiz where she could win one pound of pure gold. This quiz wasn't like ordinary ones. At the end of the show, the host brought her three large jars. Each of them has one pound of pure gold inside, plus some unpleasant surprise. The first jar has venomous snakes inside, the second one is full of acid, and the third one is filled with boiling hot water. Karen can only use her hands to get the gold out of the jars. She has 30 minutes to think. Which one should she choose?
Karen should choose the one with hot water. It cools down pretty fast, and it's gonna get lukewarm in half an hour. Guess who's rich now? Look at the picture attentively. Can you say who didn't help to build the doghouse? Yep, it's the man on the right. He's holding a brick, but the doghouse is made of wood. Sarah was a popular guitar player in a rock band. On Friday, the band was going to have a big gig. Sarah's bandmates were waiting for her, but the girl was very late. Eventually, she did show up, but it wasn't Sarah. It was her twin sister, Alice. She was envious of Sarah, so she locked her sister in a room, took her clothes and the guitar, and pretended to be a band member. But as soon as the musicians saw fake Sarah, they immediately knew she wasn't their bandmate. How did they understand? Look at how long the girl's nails are. But you need to have short nails to play the guitar. A man came to a fruit market to sell watermelons. After he sold half of them and half of a watermelon, he saw he had one watermelon left. How many watermelons did he bring to the market? He came there with three watermelons. Cheryl ran into the house, extremely worried. I set off as soon as I heard the news, she told the police officer. I was at my parents' house in another town. I left a week ago and was supposed to stay there for at least 10 more days. What's happened to my husband? Somebody hit Mr. Brown on the head. He was taken to a hospital, but he's going to be okay. I've been questioning the suspects. Mr. Brown's secretary said, He sent me to his business partner earlier in the morning. Some important documents needed signatures. The cook said, I haven't left the kitchen today. Mr. Brown wanted me to prepare a meal for the whole family. The housekeeper said, I didn't hear anything. I was doing some household chores all day long. After that, I was so tired, I decided to take a nap. The detective realized who the culprit was in no time. Who was it? It was the cook. Mrs. Brown's wife was out of town. There was no need to cook a lot all day long. Olivia was running a marathon. Right before the finish line, she did her best and outran the person who was running in second place. The woman was happy. She was going to win. But in a few seconds, she got very disappointed. Why? Olivia was in second place. She was faster than the person in the second place, but not the first. Look at this image attentively. Can you guess which person is a ghost? Look at the woman on the right. She has no legs and is just floating through the air. Amanda loved dogs very much. One day, she was walking in the park and saw a lovely corgi. The dog was friendly, and Amanda even petted the animal. Soon, the pooch's owner appeared, and the girl asked him how old the dog was. Well, in two years, Luna will be twice as old as she was five years ago. Amanda nodded and continued her walk. And did you understand how old the dog was? Luna is 12 years old. Liza worked as a teaching assistant at a college. That day, she had to look after a group of students who were writing an exam. Liza knew some of them were going to cheat. And indeed, soon after the exam started, the girl spotted one person who was cheating. Who was it? It's the guy in the back of the classroom. He's got the answers written on his arm. Jacob wakes up locked in a basement. He has no idea how it happened or who is behind this. Near his bed, he finds a note. 2 plus 2 equals fish. 3 plus 3 equals 8. 7 plus 7 equals triangle. Explain this and you'll be free. Can you help Jacob get out of the basement?
stack the first number and the second one that is flipped backwards. And you'll get a fish, number 8, and a triangle. Two guards were looking in different directions. One had to make sure there was no danger coming from the west. The other was turned toward the east. At one point, one of the guards asked the other, Why are you smiling? But how could he know his companion was smiling? The men were indeed looking in the opposite directions, but they weren't standing back to back. They were facing each other. Brian was walking down the stairs when his foot slipped and he tumbled. When the guy came to his senses, he discovered he was mostly unharmed, but he couldn't remember anything. Suddenly, two women entered the house. They looked exactly the same. When they found out what had happened, each of them started to claim Brian was her husband. Can you help the guy understand which one is his real wife? It's Rachel. She has a tattoo on the same arm as the girl in the wedding photo. Oliver was sailing his yacht when a storm started. The yacht sank in the middle of the ocean. After swimming for hours, the guy finally reached a deserted island. He saw several men there. They told Oliver they would keep him locked in one of the caves on the island. Oliver agreed, but asked them to grant him one last wish. When he told the men what this wish was, they set him free. Why? He said, I want the smartest of you to lock me there. Oh, by the way, you get extra points if you caught my error in the description. An island with several men on it is not deserted. One of Kenneth's professors at university had an unconventional way of grading his students. On Wednesday, Kenneth and his friends had to write a test, but their professor gave each of them a picture. You need to figure out how many people there are in this image. Those of you who will come up with the correct answer won't need to write the test. Can you help Kenneth figure out the right number of people? There are six people in the picture. Five of them are visitors. And one more person is looking through a peephole in the painting on the right. Emily was walking in the park when she saw two teenagers sitting on a bench. They were arguing who should pay for riding an electric scooter. Each of them claimed it was the other one who used the scooter. Emily didn't need much time to understand who had to pay. Can you figure it out too? Look at the footprints. The girl was the one to ride the electric scooter. Dennis is taking part in a competition. If his last answer is correct, he'll get a prize, an expensive watch. But first, he needs to figure out which of these two watches is real and which is just a toy. The watch on the left is a toy. Look at its minute hand. It's too long and won't be able to pass all the way around the watch face. Mr. and Mrs. Anderson wanted to celebrate their wedding anniversary. They were going to organize an extravagant party and invite hundreds of guests. But Mrs. Anderson was worried about all the expensive stuff they had at their villa. The couple decided to invite a detective to look after the guests. And indeed, in the middle of the party, the detective noticed a thief. Look at the people gathered in the garden and try to spot the criminal. It's the guy on the left. He's trying to steal a woman's bracelet. Look at the picture attentively. What is the missing number? It's four. All these numbers indicate how many times the lines cross in each case. There are 100 books on a shelf. To count off 10 of them, you'll need 10 seconds. So, how much time will you spend counting off 70 books? Just 30 seconds. 
You need this time to count off 30 books, and the rest will make 70. One morning, Donna came to the office and found a box of chocolates on her desk. There was also a strange note. October 7th, May 3rd, August 1st, January 3rd. Can you help Donna understand who presented her the sweets? Her secret admirer is Ryan. Those are not dates. The number actually means the needed letter in the name of the month. Mark was going to an important business meeting. He was running a bit late. That's why he was driving fast. Unfortunately, the man got into a car accident. Both he and the other driver were okay, but the cars were badly damaged. Mark called the police. When they arrived, Mark explained the situation. I was driving fast, but I wasn't breaking any rules. Suddenly, a car pulled out in front of me. I didn't have enough time to break. The other driver exclaimed, This whole accident is your fault. I was driving slowly, talking to my wife about our weekend plans, and then you appeared out of nowhere. The police officers immediately understood who was responsible for the accident. Do you know it? It was the other driver. He was alone in his car. It means he was talking to his wife on the phone, which is illegal. Detective Mitchell was following a bank robber. But after the criminal turned the corner, he seemed to vanish into thin air. After wandering around for a while, the detective came across a small park with a lake. Right on the shore, there were several marble statues. The man was about to pass by when something drew his attention he realized where the criminal was. Can you figure it out? One of the statues is looking at its watch. It's the bank robber. James escaped from prison and ran to the countryside. Suddenly, on a small, dark road, he saw a police car heading in his direction. James ran toward the car for some time, then jumped off the road and rushed into the woods. Why did he run toward the car first? James was in the middle of a bridge when he saw the car. He had to run toward the vehicle to get off of the bridge. 